imagine an army of monsters created in a lab. An army of ferocious ape men taking orders from the evil Joseph Stalin. It has been said that they wanted to create an army of giant apes. This would be a new breed of super warrior, half ape, half man. But why does Stalin need and want an army of killer intelligent ape men? He is trying to solve a problem the Soviets themselves have created. In the years after the revolution, the communists ruled by terror. The secret political police, the Cheka, torture and murder ordinary Russians in their tens of thousands. In this supposed workers' paradise, no one was free to change jobs, criticize the regime, or even travel. Peasants had their plots taken from them and were forced onto collective farms, and anybody who went on strike, they were simply shot. The secret police later become the NKVD, and they take the Red Terror to new levels of barbarism. Millions of Russians are sent to the hellish Gulag prison camps, or are simply murdered. An offhand comment or an ill-considered joke is enough to have you and your family arrested, tortured, and killed. This red terror creates a population which is passive and fearful, but it turns them against their communist masters. In 1941, Germany invades, and the advancing troops are welcomed as liberators by many impoverished and depressed Soviet citizens. To make matters worse, Stalin's purges have decimated his own army. In 1937, Stalin's secret police, the NKVD, arrested, tortured, and executed the majority of the Russian military high command. That included some 500 senior officers and eight generals. To replace officers killed in the purges, junior soldiers are promoted. Red Army conscripts are nervous, dispirited, and resentful. They hate the Germans less than they hate their own communist commissars. As the Germans storm across Russia's eastern territories, the Soviet forces simply crumble and millions of their soldiers surrender. With too few tanks, too few guns, and far too few good soldiers, Stalin really needed an army of superhuman ape men on his side. Ever since the 1917 revolution, Soviet leaders have talked of creating a new breed of superhumans who are perfectly obedient to communist rule. Stalin is reported to say, I want a new, invincible human being, insensitive to pain, resistant and indifferent about the quality of food they eat. These Soviet supermen will be super strong, super intelligent, able to suppress their feelings, and programmed to sacrifice themselves in the interests of the socialist state. The socialist superhumans will not be created in a lab, but will be the products of a superior communist system. Perfect society will create perfect people. But so far, the perfect communist system has delivered only famine, poverty, and fear. So Stalin will have to create a different kind of super strong warrior. A creature only partly human. Since the Middle Ages, there have been stories of women who had bred with apes and given birth to monstrous creatures. Some Soviet scientists began to wonder, could such creatures be created in a lab and, and bred like dogs and horses for strength and speed and loyalty? Work starts on a human-ape hybrid after the end of World War I. Heading the program is Professor Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov, a leading expert in the artificial insemination of farm animals. He has already successfully bred a zebra with a donkey to make a z-donk. Crossed a cow with a bison to get a zubron. And a zebra with a horse to create a sauce. 
His new challenge is to create a cross between a human and an ape. Ivanov was convinced that apes and humans were very close biological cousins. And actually, he was dead right. <laughs> humans have one pair fewer chromosomes than other great apes. Having a different number of chromosomes is not an absolute barrier to breeding with other species. Ivanov and his colleagues begin a program of artificial insemination. This will involve crossbreeding female apes with a number of selected Russian men. To begin with, Ivanov attempts to make female apes pregnant using sperm thought to have been donated by his 22-year-old son. In effect, he is creating his own half-human grandchild. But despite repeated attempts, the female apes fail to become pregnant. This is the point where the research took an even darker turn. Ivanov decided to use women in his experiments. He selected a number of women to be inseminated with the sperm of male orangutans. The ethics of making women give birth to ape monsters did not stop Ivanov and his fellow scientists. Ivanov lines up five women to conduct his first trials. To inseminate them, a suitably strong, agile, intelligent orangutan is selected and transported hundreds of miles to the lab. The 26-year-old ape is called Tarzan. But just before Tarzan is able to inseminate the women, he suffers a brain hemorrhage and dies. Ivanov's ambitious dream dies with Tarzan. He has failed to prove that ape and human DNA are compatible and the regime loses patience with his research. At the point when Ivanov is trying to create this half-ape, half-human hybrid, the science of genetics is only just beginning. Within decades, scientific advances lead to successful in vitro fertilization, cloning, and genetic modification. If Ivanov knew then what we know now, Stalin might have got his monster army of human hybrids. If he'd had the kind of technology that created Dolly the Sheep, he might have got closer to his goal. But thankfully, the tools of modern genetic science were not available to Stalin. In the end, the only monstrous animals in the Red Army are the Communist Party commissars and secret police, who torture and murder countless millions of people.